What's up, y'all? I am Marcus, and welcome back to From the Dark. Today, we're gonna take a little trip into the past. And we've got a very... I, I like this setup quite a bit right here. We've got uh, plus 15 scythe, silver knight shield, talisman, chain helm, the brass armor that we picked up in the Dark Moon Tomb last time, sorcerer's gauntlets, chain leggings, and also favor and havel for our rings. It looks pretty, looks pretty sweet if you ask me. Uh, I'm gonna be maxing out all of these halberds so that we can compare the damage. The only maxed out halberds that we have right now are the Titanite Catchpole at plus 5. It's a special weapon that maxes at plus 5. And the Scythe at plus 15. And if we compare the damage, you see that this says 422 and this says 510. But they're split damage. This is 275 physical plus scaling plus the 147 from scaling right here. Whereas the Titanite Catchpole is uh, split damage, 187 physical, 217 magical. It does have scaling, but the point is that 510 total is reduced by two different sets of enemy defense, so it's gonna end up doing less damage against a lot of enemies. But today we're gonna rock this scythe and play around with it for a bit. Oh, hello. Miracles, I presume? Yes, I know. No change Come there. The if All right. So yeah, today we're going to head into the DLC. We picked up the broken pendant last time from Seath's the Duke's archives. Deeply enchanted. The vine appears to originate from Ulysseal. Half of a broken pin. You're still alive. Hmm. I was kind of expecting her not to be alive <laughs> anymore. I was thinking Petrus may have killed her, but... That event, we'll have to see another day, I suppose. Probably after we beat a boss. See our scythe's doing pretty good damage here. Also, another important note is that the uh, split damage Titanite Catchpole can't be enchanted, whereas this can. We don't quite have enough faith for Sunlight Blade. It wouldn't really help us too much against the boss that I'm planning to fight today anyway, so it's not a big deal. We do have an ember, though, that we haven't given to Andre yet. Oh, my. What a brilliant ember you have there. I've only heard legends of such specimens. The embers used for the secret rites of divine blacksmiths. Perhaps you could lend it to me. I've long dreamed of forging divine weapons. I see. Is a pity. I can't expect you to give up what's yours. I'll be seeing. I just, I want to point this out. I know it's, this is like almost 100% a uh, gameplay consideration, but you would expect that the blacksmith of the gods, the giant blacksmith in, in, in Orlando, to be able to make divine weapons, but I don't know. Maybe not. I've only heard the embers. Perhaps you... I've known. <laughs> Splendid. Splendid. Thank you. Andre of Astora never disappoints. I assure you. And using that ember, we can now take our divine weapons and level them up to be... <laughs> stronger divine <laughs> weapons. I guess there's not much more to say about it than that. I don't actually have any leveled up divine stuff right now. What? Mm. There we go. Well, no. I'm not going to do it right now. I'll be seeing you there, B. I was looking for a weapon that I don't really care too much about to actually do that to, but I couldn't find one. So, Other than the... Well, I mean, I don't care about the mail breaker, but it's not really good for showing off that anyway. Anyway, you guys can join me down at the bottom of the basin. 
Okay, down here in the Darkroot Basin, where normally you can have a little chat with Dusk. But today, she's not here. She's not here at all. Her summon sign's not present for us. That's a hint. She disappears after you pick up the pendant from the golem in Duke's archives. And then she disappears, and that's kind of a hint as to where the entrance might be, but... It, honestly, a lot of people are going to say, how could you possibly figure this out? It did not take very long. <laughs> like, once you already start to su suspect that Darkroot is Ulysseal, and once you go to check her corpse's location, you find something very peculiar. Now her corpse is just beyond there, and this is where we picked up the en the enchanted set of dusk. Right here. And now we're in a different place, and indeed, a different time. When the dark root dark- when the dark root garden wasn't quite so dark. It's been a long time since I played this, guys, so bear with me if I struggle. Not run. I'm not trying to run. I'm trying to. Whoa, why is it? Hold on. I'm struggling a little bit here with my controls, actually. Give me one second. Healed up. That's gonna happen. Why is it? I'm trying to run, actually. But I'm having some issues with the controls. Every time I try to run, it makes me roll. Not, not super great. There we go. <laughs> and I got full blasted. That's what we want. That's how you cut that tail right there. Oopsie. Ah, that lightning blast. It does actually spread out and create an AoE in the water. The mighty gust. Oops. Oops. <laughs> Thought I got him both times and I did not. Oh, I missed. Trying to stay close to where he can't mess around with his lightning bullcrap. A stable shield really helps here. The end. Not so bad once my controller started working. <laughs> 
first part of that fight, every time I touched the button to try to run, it was forcing a roll instead, and I don't know what was going on with that. This... This is something that I feel like Bloodborne lacked. Like, I didn't... Uh, Dark Souls has got a lot of really great, really varied environments, and some of them are, of course, very dark and very sinister, but some of them are just like, the, the brightly lit outside areas. I really like that, and that having that contrast actually makes the dark bits darker, and this is just something with, with Bloodborne. I know that's kind of a random comparison all of a sudden, but... Um, that's really what kind of one of my complaints is that the darks aren't really as dark as they could be in Bloodborne because there's not much light. You need that kind of contrast. And that it's kind of one of those things that stands out for me when I when I think about Dark Souls 1 and what makes it special as a Souls game and why it's so loved by so many people. I think this is part of it. Like there are parts that are just kind of like beautiful and bright out outside areas just normal medieval fantasy kind of stuff and then you've got some crazy dark shit but anyway for this boss fight uh, having a stable shield like the silver knight shield will let you block that sanctuary guardians attacks otherwise you can lock on while in front of him and kind of strafe backwards I can't do it because there's no lock on target here but just kind of hold back and keep walking backwards and let most of his combo miss you uh, if you have a less stable shield that's one way to do it of course, dodge rolling forward past it is also possible. Uh, note, too, that if you stand here, you're not in the water. So when he shoots his lightning and it hits the water, it does actually spread out as an AoE, uh, an area of effect. But if you're here, it's a little bit safer. And I believe there is part of the water that's actually deep enough to where... No, okay, I take it back. There might not be any part of the water that's deep enough to where you would need the rusted iron ring to move normally, which is a good thing for game design perspective for me. Uh, some people like it. I mean, it's okay from time to time when there's a boss with a gimmick where there's a specific item that can make it just a ton easier, as long as it's accessible to every build. I think that's fine, but uh, here, that's not the case. Like, even if you don't have the ring, it doesn't matter. Like, you can see I wasn't using it. Uh, when you want to cut his tail, you definitely want to bait that fly up attack. And then you wait until the last second and then dodge to the side and then run behind him. Two hand your weapon, get one good shot in. If you have something like the scythe at plus 15, it's not going to be difficult. Speaking of that weapon, let's check it out. Guardian tail. Sliced tail of the Sanctuary Guardian. This flexible, spiked, and highly poisonous tail would make a rather obnoxious weapon. You can see it does have the 180 poison. I think it actually inflicts toxin. Can't recall at the, at the current moment. Uh, this boss is... Hold on, let's look at the... No, I don't want to do that! Well, I mean, I guess I can show it off. You can see it's... You're actually using his tail as a weapon. Just a standard whip class weapon. It's pretty obnoxious, I guess. Oh, people were asking me why I don't use L1 and R1 to flip through the item panes. That's because on Dark Souls 1, guys, that actually swaps. Like, from equipment to inventory to status. Like, this is an improvement that they've put in later games. So. Just, I've had a bunch of people ask me about that. There's a reason why I'm manually scrolling through everything. The Guardian Soul, which actually has a very unique color to it. Soul of the White-Winged Lion Sanctuary Watchkeeper, who dreaded the spread of the Abyss. The Guardian exhibited traits of several animals other than lions, suggesting that it was no ordinary beast, but rather closer to the beings known as demons. And it dreaded the spread of the Abyss. Um, the Guardian, the Sanctuary Guardian is one of my least favorite parts of this DLC. Not because of the fight itself. The fight itself I think is pretty cool. Uh, but, you know, they had so many opportunities. All of the other bosses, primarily Artorius and Manus, are super deeply related to the lore. But the Sanctuary Guardian is... Eh. Here we go.
The walls of Lordran up above. Or rather the law the laws. The walls of An Orlando, I should say. No arms with which to punch us. Well, look at this one. From what faraway age hast thou come? Thy scent is very human indeed, but not intolerable. Princess Dust has spoken of thee. Thy aura is precisely as she described. I thank thee deeply for rescuing her highness. But Princess Dusk is here no longer. Snatched away by that horrifying primeval human. And so I must ask, couldst thou once more play the savior? Thine scent is very human indeed. What far away age do you... She makes it sound like people have become more human over the years. And it, it seems to imply that perhaps being undead is a natural state of humanity. Uh, I'll also point out that Dusk's artwork, her uh, concept art, has her with pointed ears, not using like the standard human model. I think that's just kind of something that they had to do for the, for the, you know, just assets <laughs> that they had in the game. That that's how they, <laughs> how can I say it? That's the model that they had, so they just used a standard human model. But if you look at her concept artwork, it looks she looks significantly less human. She looks more like an elf. Thank you. I am Elizabeth, guardian of this sanctuary. Something of a godmother to Princess Dusk. I shall assist thee to my utmost, for I am one with the sorceries of Ulacil. Ulacil. Something of a godmother to Princess Dusk, she says. And now we can actually buy gold pine resin, that's great. And Ulacil. <laughs> Ulysil, I always say Ulysil, uh, Ulysil Ivory Catalyst, which we already have, we got from Dusk. Basically, Elizabeth becomes a, a sorcery vendor for Ulysil's sorceries if you haven't bought them all from Dusk. If you've already got them, then she doesn't really have anything to sell you, so. Thou shalt see further on. An abyss was begat of the ancient beast and threatens to swallow the whole of Ulysil. Knight Artorius came to stop this, but such a hero has nary a murmur of dark. Without doubt he will be swallowed by the abyss, overcome by its utter blackness. Indeed, the abyss may be unstoppable. Still, I have faith that Princess Dusk may be rescued yet. So what this mushroom is telling us is that our princess is in another abyss. Uh, Sir Artorius has nary a murmur of dark. A uh, lot of different ways to interpret it. I interpret it to mean that Artorius is not human. Uh, and therefore he will not be able to successfully walk the abyss without being tainted by it. Because he's not human. And he requires the light. Like that's, that's kind of my interpretation of that dialogue. But she seems to think that we will be able to tackle the abyss. Be pre precisely because... We have more than a murmur of dark, you know what I mean? Um, beyond that, she also said an abyss was begat of the ancient beast. So, the beast, Manus, ancient, even to the people of Ulysil, which is far in the past. Thou shalt see further on. An abyss was begat of the ancient beast. Night Artorius came to stop this. Without doubt, he will be swallowed by the abyss. Indeed. The abyss may be unstoppable. Still, I have faith. May the flames guide thee. May the flames guide thee. And we see at this point there are already bonfires in the world as well. Uh, once again, you can look at it as a gameplay mechanic or um, or not. Like, either way. Hold on, let's, let's head back to Firelink Shrine real quick. I want to check to see if this uh, Petrus event has proceeded. Damn you, Petrus of Thurland, you m not murdering bastard. You 
hurry up and do the damn thing. Alright. Now, normally for going through Ulusil, or at least through the forest, I tend to not fight all the enemies. Instead, I tend to use hidden magic and the slumbering dragon crest ring to sneak by everything. Here we see these, it's like cast light in these torches. Really nice little detail. And vines and whatnot are highly associated with Ulusil. And this should be a very familiar view. Uh, if not, I'll show you exactly what it is later in the playthrough. And if you haven't put it together, prepare to have your mind blown. If you have, then you already know how fucking awesome this is. But you'll recognize this place very shortly. The Royal Wood. As I say, I normally tend to just sneak through and not fight anything. Fascinating. It reminds you a lot of Dark Root Garden in the first place, right? These kind of plant people. About to find something else that reminds us a little bit of it as well. Over there. Let's see if we can just pull a little bit of it. Oh, I missed. Oh, and I may pay for it with my life. <laughs> Ooh. That looks familiar too, right? <laughs> Fighting these guys is kind of dumb. Oopsie. Like I said, by far the easiest way to handle this entire area is Hidden Body and the Slumbering Dragon Crest Ring and just skip all the enemies. But not today. Enchanted flowers similar to the dark root garden again. Oh, I didn't even see you <laughs> Or you Probably another one I didn't see as well Yeah Right. <laughs> I was born yesterday. I've been playing Souls games for a little bit. I know what it means when an enemy runs away from me. <laughs> it does not mean that they're scared. Nope. Not mean that at all. attack I guess maybe let's see if we can handle this first 
Come on. I want to get myself to a little bit more favorable favorable position. Draw these guys out and go ahead and kill them before we deal with this jerkwad. Just like the stone guardians of Dark Red Garden, right? Uh, from one perspective, a lot of people might be disappointed that they reused so much assets. But for me, I really like the kind of alternate take that they gave you on things. Really wish you'd. There we go. Much better. I'm starting to remember how to play this game. Uh oh. They both drop stuff once again. In Dark Souls, when it rains, it pours. Like the drop. Here we go, do it. The drops tend to either. They tend to come in multiples. Uh oh, that ain't enough. <laughs> Shit. I <laughs> lost that motherfucker. Probably lost that treasure too. Well, at least it wasn't like that time I kicked that crystal lizard off the cliff in Demon Souls. I don't know how many of you guys remember that, but god damn, that was a. Oh, oh man, Demon Souls. Here we go. Purple Moss Claw. Not even. Not even. It's not even. It's not that we can't even, it's that we don't even. There, we've been spotted. Take this guy out. Oops, I rolled too late. That ended up. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay, good. Starting to worry that I wasn't going to do enough damage to kill him and he was about to whack the crap out of me. A little bit different style of commentary today because. Dun dun dun! Blue Tight Night Slab. Blue Titanite Slab for uh, Weapon Reinforcement Legendary Slabs were the domain of the gods. Legendary Slabs are the heirlooms of a nameless blacksmith deity who forged the weapons of other gods. So maybe that's where the divine weapons come from. Weapons forged with this slab become rare legendary weapons. Kind of funny, we didn't we find the Ulusil Ember? The Enchanted Ember in a chest in a puddle of water in the woods? Hmm. Hmm. I'm sure it's nothing. <laughs> In here. We see this chasm below. 
A chasm with treasure. And a tower. I remember when we first started seeing bits of this tower in the first images from the DLC content. Uh, a lot of us were thinking maybe there was a painted world connection in the architecture. But yeah, a little bit different style commentary today because I haven't played this content in so long, so I'm rediscovering it in some ways as I play it, which is really fun. There we go. Just trying to see what we can see. Treasure. See plenty of treasure. And more of these torches. This will serve as a shortcut. But not just yet. Guardian gauntlets. Gauntlets of the Stone Knights, Guardians of the Forest Sanctuary. The Stone Knights are golems animated by magic, and their enchanted gauntlets are oppressively heavy. The Stone Knight is a product of ancient magic. Alright, let's continue on. Just kind of the magic particles just floating about. The different particles that you find floating around in different areas in Dark Souls always really add to the atmosphere. I don't know if it's like embers or leaves that it's supposed to be in the uh, Undead Burg, but or Undead Burg and Undead Parish, but it always kind of gives me this kind of autumn sort of feeling. Whereas here, you know, you've got just magic literally floating in the air. Alright, big ambush. Come with it now. Wow, 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 wow. Oh no, he was not. You're dead. You're dead. Little ambush there. There we go. A little jumping forward R2 action. This is where the enemy ran away from us earlier. So if we had pursued Lu Bu <laughs> at Hulao Gate, <laughs> we would have got ambushed from, from the top. And if we had went too far, we would have had these assholes to contend with as well. Oh man, that ain't what I wanted to do at all. Yeah. Ooh, I almost got stuck on that tree. Make sure I don't get one shot. Do it. Aw. Easy, beautiful cover girl. Just 
different types of vegetation. Guardian leggings. Obviously the pants to that set that we found the gloves for just a moment ago. And here... More treasure. Hell yeah. Calamit. Just saying hi with his one wicked eye. God damn. I hear something. Do you hear something? I hear something. <laughs> He's supposed to drop down from above and ambush you, but if you stand in the right spot, <laughs> he does that. It's funny, but yeah, he's supposed to drop down behind you, and then you're stuck with a battle on the cliffside with a waterfall in the distance. God, I love this game. This DLC is fucking awesome. I forgot how awesome this DLC was. <laughs> I'm having fun exploring. Crystal Lizard gonna make me run off a cliff if I don't... Watch out! No! Oh, well. <laughs> Funny looking creatures when you actually look at them. Starting to see this kind of purple miasma. garden is beginning to look a little bit more corrupted as we head further in. Not to do but hop below, I suppose. Crystal lizard really leading us down. Because we don't want to go down there. <laughs> we won't take that road. Looking nasty. <laughs> Try to snip me. And Edward Scissor's hands, motherfucker, over here. We see treasure. And there's a couple of different paths we can take. Around this big chasm. Let's try the direct approach first. I really have forgotten a lot of this, to be honest. It's just been that long since I've actually played through this area instead of just stealth running through it and picking up the, but actually playing through and picking up the treasures and whatnot. It's a completely different experience. It's at the top of that tower. We saw it from another angle before. They didn't see me? They didn't see me. Okay. The good range on this scythe is really... Like, the speed and range of it is really helpful. I hear something faintly because I uh, have my volume turned down real low but I do hear something
Fuck it. Soul of a Brave Warrior, Elizabeth's Mushroom. Is that the waterfall we're hearing? <laughs> That's nasty. And the helmet to the Guardian set. The waterfall's over there. Perhaps just the wind. Like I said, I got my volume turned down real low, so... So that my microphone doesn't pick it up and give you guys an... a suboptimal listening experience. May actually be the waterfall I'm supposed to be hearing. <laughs> Hi there, buddy. You just didn't see me? Just weren't interested? stalking our way along the outside four prongs plow i know we will read it we'll read it we're getting stuff we haven't read it yet we will primarily that and elizabeth's mushroom are what we got so far golf's great arrow right here overlooking the waterfall and the basin below Let's see. First, we got Elizabeth's mushroom, right? Large medicinal mushroom of Elizabeth, keeper of the sanctuary. Its dramatic effect can make the difference between a warrior's life and death. So, her mushrooms have potent healing powers. Some people may recognize something from Dark Souls 2 right there. Uh, let's see. What else? Oh, the four pronged plow, right? Oh no, I could probably get to that quicker here. A spear, maybe. Yes. Four-pronged plow wielded by the wooden scarecrows, serfs of the forest sanctuary. The scarecrow serfs would not normally use these four-pronged plows as weapons, but their sharpness makes them very deadly. They would not normally use them as weapons, but they sense danger. Because we're an intruder? Because we're human? Because they sense the dark? Or because they've been manipulated like they wouldn't normally use them as weapons but they sure as shit are right now and then we get the end of the guardian set right there and also recognize this is where we came up in the first place So now it's time to explore the other side of things. I think we got all the items from over there. You see me, but can you get to me? Apparently not, they've taken the long way around.
it's interesting how uh, the designers at FromSoft sometimes use uh, AI pathing and siding mechanics to set up delayed ambushes. We can hop down here. They're gonna come back and try to fight us now. Now we know how to get to you. Oh, man. Damn. Hey! Stop it! I'm gonna die. <laughs> I'm gonna die to scarecrows. The forest surfs. I should have upgraded my Estus now that I think about it. All that for a large soul of a proud knight. It's funny how slight alterations in the terrain and coming at things from a different angle can really disorient you on the geography of a place that should be familiar. Crystal Lizard leading us to an ambush. Running one, the running swing, double. Smash down and up. No, not gonna do the up. Double. There we go. Twinkly tight night. Glad to have more Twinkling Titanite. Fighting two of these guys at one time would not be fun. Leading to that old soul's adage of either rush through and don't fight anything or take your time and fight them one at a time. Like, the middle ground is where it's really dangerous. You want to back off the cliff there? No? These guys have really high defense, so I'm two-handing my weapon to try to have as much of my attack power actually pierce through as possible. Oh no! Ooh. Shit! Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I almost went off the cliff, boys. Off the cliff, boys. The hot new Twitch meme. Shit. Alright, you die. And another twinkling. Totally worth it. Are there more? <laughs> yeah, there's more stuff over there. It looks like there's treasure as well. So we need to deal with that. Because we're getting everything. First, soul of a proud knight. <laughs> Just checking out that vista over there. Let's go ahead and unlock the shortcut. And then we'll go back and do that stuff. Yeah, there's lots to look at here. 
and even someone to speak with. But first, let's unlock the shortcut. That will unlock the first elevator that we found early on in the level. So we can get back here easily now. Hmm. Ah, let me guess. Snatched by a shadowy limb and dragged off to the past? To the past, eh? Yes, of course. Exactly what happened to me. We are both strangers in this strange land. But at least now there are two of us. Sell some good stuff. Sniper bolts. Did you happen across Knight Artorias? The legendary abyss walker from the old tales. Well, if you haven't, it's just as well. He's a colorless sort, if you ask me. <laughs> So, what did that giant mushroom make you do? Not that I care. It's none of my business. <laughs> so long. Marvelous Chester. One thing to remember is that the key for us to actually be snatched into the past was a broken pendant. Or, more specifically, half of a broken pendant. Chester, you wouldn't happen to know anything about the other half, would you? Oh, still alive, are you? Think of anything that you might need? Hmm, I've little to talk about, really. Oh, you know me. What do I know? <laughs> so long. And from here you can see some treasure that leads you to another side path. We'll head down there and to not too distant future. Boss gate right up ahead. As well as a city. A city and a preview of what's to come. A rather, a rather twisted city in some ways there, like, the buildings are all crooked and whatnot. Almost as if it's falling into an abyss. Birth of an ancient beast. While we've still cleared out all this other stuff though, let's go ahead and try to grab the last of this treasure. See him gardening. Really cool detail. But, of course, it's a Souls game, so... You know what's gonna happen when I pick up that treasure. You know it. I know it. The AI knows it. He's stealing our gold coin. No, no. Oh, man. It didn't have to be like this. Do a little gardening of my own. Another different little vista. Down into the layout of Lucille. I wonder what that tower was actually originally supposed to be. Hmm.
this would have just led us back down to the treasure that we've already gotten. All right, I think I probably got most everything. I may have missed one or two little things here or there, but no, no big deal, right? Let's head back. Thank goodness thou art safe. What is thy wish? I offer thee my all. Thou art from a time far, far ahead. There are many things I wish to ask, but I know that I must not. The perils of our time are overwhelming enough. <laughs> Was thine eye glancing hither? Thou needst not hide thy wonder. I am a mushroom, after all. <laughs> Way to make yourself sound sinister there, Elizabeth. <laughs> Thou needst not ha I am a mushroom, after all. <laughs> May the flames guide thee. All right. Guys, I am Marcus, also known as Ian B. This is the grave of the modern day grave of Artorius the Abyss Walker. This has been from the dark. Today, we're going to do the thing. We're going to do a very special thing. And I'll catch you on the next episode. Later, y'all.